everyone, and we're live. You're tuning to Cosmic Children. I'm your host, Kevin. And today I have two very interesting individuals in the studio with me. They are the founding team of this group called NFT Asia, which begs the questions. A lot of questions, actually. So, Clara, Ernest, could you please introduce yourself before we dive deeper into uh, what, it, what is NFT is one is, and what is NFT Asia? Hi. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Clara. I am one of the founders, part of the founding team of NFT Asia. Um, outside of NFT Asia, uh, I'm a curator. I work in a curatorial capacity currently at a multi-concept space called Appetite. So I run the art program there. Um, outside of that, I'm an independent arts writer. So I write exhibition reviews, artist interviews, analysis and such. And I also lecture at LaSalle College of the Arts. That's a lot. Ernest. <laughs> yeah, how do I top that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm, also, I'm Ernest. Uh, I in my in the public sphere i go by ernest Wu because there's a famous ernest go um um yeah so i'm a visual artist uh by practice um i run my own creative technology studio called uh, serial communication um we do ar vr xr experiences um and now we're sort of pivoting into the nft space as well um and with nft asia uh like it started because um, um, Clara interviewed us. So we all started the Discord together um, back in March last year. Yeah. Which begs the question, what is NFT Asia? NFT Asia is a digital community. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds really rehearsed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically NFT Asia is the largest kind of digital native community where based on like Discord and Twitter mm. um, and it focuses on uplifting Asian and Asia based artists and the NFT space. Uh, we started it because we felt that there was a lack of spaces in this NFT ecosystem that mm. really focused on artists from this part of the world um and you know if you like go on and look at say like top 100 nft artists right now or most of the nft artists uh or artists working with nfts that are being talked about in like legacy media um it as you know like key examples or acknowledged as like front runners of the space mm. most of them come from a certain part of the world mm. the us or europe yep. um and it's not that there aren't artists or creatives from Asia who are being, you know, very innovative, who are experimenting with this technology and space. Rather, um, and I guess this is like a much larger problem with mm. like cultural hegemony yep. and so on, right? Um, they're just not being talked about or given as much airtime and focus um, for their work. So we wanted to create this space that you know, really provided a platform to bring people together as well and to share resources to kind of build mutual capacities. Um, so another thing that we learned when we first joined the space or joined the space in a more engaged, like in-depth capacity um, around like February, March last year, even though some of us had been dabbling long before that, um, was that we all kind of felt like individuals who are trying to navigate the space, yep. but we, we were really lost. And there are some resources or mm, issues relating to accessing the space that are location specific or language specific. Interesting. And so you want to, you know, just be in like a group chat together where mm. you can talk to other people from the same places as you are, who are encountering the same issues or pain points as you are. So you can also work through those things together. Um, but also just to carve out a space that I think is not so profit driven within mm. this like hyper financialized system yep. where it's artists trying to work together, support each other and grow together in the NFT space, thinking about their longer term practice. So I guess we fulfill like three different or even more um, needs that we personally see yep. in the community and yep hope to provide yeah i think a quick note on that i think very early on when the discord was started a lot of the questions were geographically located in some ways what does so, that mean though so how do i access eth in mm. my home country yep um, because it's not as widely accessible exactly. as, as we think it is okay okay exactly so in singapore there, there are a few platforms that allow you to access let's say a, a certain cryptocurrency that, yep. that you want to get onto so or a network that you want to get onto sorry um and 
So like people asking those questions in, in sort of specific um, regional channels, um, um, like reaching out and seeing hey, who's doing this work in Malaysia, who's doing this work in, in, in Japan yep. um, and, and making connections that way. Yeah. So I'm curious to know, how has the group grown across the one year that I think you guys just started? Is, is it to your expectations? Do you expect it to, to grow into what it is today? Yeah, I think at um at the beginning there was a lot of interest, uh, yeah. a lot of people coming in and just trying to figure out what the space was. Um, but as you know, and an art is not um, uh, how do I put it? Art is not something that um people not a lot of people can do full time. Mm. Um, not many people can dedicate a, a, a full time um, to just creating art. So a lot of people, uh, I think, came into the space thinking that oh, I'm, I'm I can sell my work really quickly. Mm. I can make a lot of money very quickly um, and found out that's not the case. Um, and so uh, uh, there's quite a lot of people who, who came in early, came out again, came in again, came out again. So uh, we sort of, st- that, I guess we, we saw different phases yep. uh, as the, the market moved and um, um, ebbed and flowed in some ways. Uh, as interest grew and then as, as interest faded as yep. well. Um, yeah. I think that sort of, uh, and I guess in in terms of how we managed and organized the space, we, we we sort of catered a little bit to what was happening. Mm. Um, so initially, uh, I think at the beginning we were like, oh, there's there's something that we, we are lacking or resources channel. So we created a resources channel. Oh, people are talking about collectibles, mm. uh, but we don't have a collectibles um, channel to talk about it. Let's talk about collectibles in the new channel. So it was really learning <laughs> along the way, uh, <laughs> yep. really sort of figuring out what the community needed and providing that space for it. Um, and I think at this moment in time, um, there is some, uh, uh, how do I put it? Some cleaning up that we need to do. What uh, does that mean? Um, where um, the needs have changed. Oh, uh, the the expectations have changed. Yep. The um, resources have have changed, yep. and I think this is sort of where we are at the cross, crossroads uh, yep. for updating what the space is. Yep. Yeah. So, so when you say that these key uh, facets have changed, could you elaborate as to what it, what, what what that means? Yeah. How how has it changed? Hmm. Maybe maybe what aspect of it? Um. Where do we start? <laughs> Uh, okay, maybe maybe just in terms of pricing. Yep. Uh, I, I think that's the most outwardly uh, accessible uh, statistic. Um, at the very beginning of last year, uh, you could sell a work upwards of three, four, five ETH. Mm. Uh, no issue because ETH was low. Mm. Um, but as ETH sort of ebbed and flowed, uh, as ETH went, uh, uh, became more and more expensive, uh, people started pricing their, their, their works uh, at lower ETH prices. Mm. Um, but because a lot of people were starting to get into the space, there was also a lot of noise. Mm. So a lot of people were not uh, not, not selling. Um, and and um, I guess that that sort of, uh, 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 was one of the changes that we saw. Uh, another thing is, uh, at the very beginning, we were also very uh, energetic about the space. Energetic? Right? Yeah. Like like good en- energetic? Yeah, we, we yeah. were excited to be in the space. Yep. We were excited for the new opportunities. Yep. Um, we uh, had a little bit more time, I think, uh, at the very beginning because of COVID, actually, yep. um, to host uh, different events, to... Uh, do many online uh, um, activities. Yep. Uh, but I think as 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 these uh, COVID started to wane and, mm. and the spaces started to open up, the online activity also yep. uh, sort of followed that. Yep. Yeah. So what does that mean? So let's say if if COVID continues to wane, what does I guess the next one year look like for for NFT Asia? <laughs> We've been talking a lot about our future plans yep. and upcoming goals. Yep. So this is like right on oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. what's on our mind. Share, share as much as you guys are comfortable sure. because to, to, to project things six months a year we'll down. We'll speak in, it into yeah. manifestation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, like with this year, we recently just went to Art Dubai mm. um, at early March. So that was our first time really participating in like a larger uh, in-person 
event setting. Mm. Um, and that required us to say like fundraise so we could participate, yep. right? Because at art fairs, which are typically, you know, it's very focused on selling and making sales for yep. galleries to attend and they have to pay a minimum fee to participate. So on, um, that really forced us to think about, or not forced, but propelled us to think about, um, you know, what it means to move forward. Mm. Um, now that we have this kind of um, validation or legitimization from like the tread art world, the traditional art market um, that recognizes us as, oh, this is an organization. You yep. guys are doing things <laughs> and you work with artists. Yep. Um, I think we've been thinking more about, okay, so... Uh, I think as Ernest pointed out, you know, there are, people are moving more towards like in-person physical activations yep. and events and connections um, in real life spaces. So we're also thinking about, all right, how can we continue to make these in real life things happen? Um, exhibitions, mm. meetups, conferences across the world, because our networks are kind of decentralized and in a lot of different cities and uh, so on. But also to think about how we can scale, I think, in terms of the capacities and opportunities we can offer to people in the community. Yep. Um, so what do artists value the most, right, in, in a space like this? Maybe it's exhibition opportunities, mm -mm. being featured, being connected to, say, working on a project or, you know, being introduced and connected with collectors mm. um, and things like this. Yep. Um, so how can we, through our capacities as like interlocutors, as like organizers of sorts, yep. um, with some kind of curatorial or event planning capacities uh, with our kind of personal or collective networks provide that. So we're thinking of, okay, let's, you know, grow in these ways yep. so we can continue to be valuable and relevant and give back to this community that's also given us so much. Yeah. But whatever you just mentioned, it will require a lot more conversation with the, the the people in the community and to actually ask them what they need. And if you talk about the the different locations, they would have different needs as well. How how would that particular problem get get uh, solved in that case? Because you guys are in Singapore, but what if someone in Malaysia or in Philippines they they need something else or they have a different set of needs than I guess the artists in Singapore? Yeah. Five minutes in gets really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm just curious because I think um, it is it is not just solely focused in one location, yeah, but it's exactly. across Asia. Exactly. And I think because Asia is very interesting because it is, uh, it's very different compared, let's say, from Thailand to Philippines to Malaysia. It's all very different. Yeah. Yeah. We face a lot of different economic realities as well mm. across even say like Southeast Asia, yep. right? And we see that the conditions for like artists in Singapore are different yep. from say like artists in the rural Philippines. Mm. There are considerations around say gas fees when you're minting an NFT um, are different um, and a lot more that comes with it. Um, I think we don't, um, we're, I think we're honest in our, with ourselves that we can't really solve all of these problems. And there are a lot of these are structural um, societal issues that we have limited abilities to address. But what we can do is at least within the NFT space uh, or, you know, at least confined within like Twitter and Discord mm -hmm. and then maybe an extension events, exhibitions that are tied to like the NFT space to try and carve out as much space as possible for artists in our community. Um, or at least that's, that's where I see like, these are some of the limited ways in which we can contribute. Or, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think um, just a quick note on that as well. Like it's, um, it's also based in some way on what we can provide. Yep. On who we can connect on um, our own networks. And so, I guess it started to become um, um, important for us to, to, to sort of exist in the real world as well. Mm. Um, because then if we uh, have find opportunities in the real world, then the online community benefits as well. Yep. So I think that's that's sort of sort of the in-between space that we are, we are, we are existing in at gotcha. the moment. I, yeah. I want to double back to the point of uh, Art Dubai. Um, was that an important event for you guys to... Uh, to, to be to be present in was it like a validation of source that you guys are kind of doing something right and that's like okay what's next yeah I'm just curious to know like both of your individual thoughts on that I I'll, I'll, I'll start first I I think um 
from an I'm, artist's point of view yeah from an artist's point of view I, I there was someone who mentioned i can't remember who already but uh, there was someone who mentioned uh, this is the first time i'm exhibiting at an art fair and i mm-hmm. feel like an artist okay um so there there's this um um i guess uh some nft artists although nft artists the the phrase is a bit sort of contentious uh like is it really there's, there's, <laughs> i mean it's, it's digital art right? sure yep so there's no such thing as like digital certificate art yep uh, yep it doesn't make sense though. yeah exactly yep. so um but their work exists as nfts so there's this nft artist so but at the same time the validation that they get is um some of them are just purely from the online world. Mm. Um, and then to finally see the work in real life, you get a validation that hey, my work is art yep. and it's it can exist at an art yep. fair. So, uh, and it's also the first time that Art Dubai is like hosting a digital section. Mm. Um, so we are seeing that kind of acceptance in the traditional art market um, and, and it's very validating for someone working in the digital space. Yep. Yeah. From like... Uh, the entity or like NFT Asia's point of view, I think it's validating on two different fronts. Like the first is, yeah, like we are doing something. In fact, in a space where there are so many different communities, there are probably like millions of discords out there that um, we're doing something that is, I said, pose like right enough not that that's like the particular word but um you know where we are being connected to people or our work is being seen as a collective as a community um and secondly nft asia is quite special in like an art fair context because Mm. most art fairs because they are focused on selling and it's more tied to the art market than the art world um you tend to see say galleries consultancies or Mm. you know um entities that are more focused on like commercial um sellability yep. um that are present at art fairs so for nft asia we're a non-profit um we don't take commissions from artwork sales Ernest saw the work at, <laughs> <laughs> at art dubai and we didn't take money from him yep. um and we didn't ask for the artists you know who were being shown at the fair to contribute money either yep. They did contribute to a fundraiser that we did um, collectively, but not for, say, their work being sold. Yep. And we don't typically, like, we don't charge artists for anything or we don't charge people to be a part of the community. Mm. There's no membership kind of application or fee structure or anything of the sort. So at core, we really want to run like an artist collective um, and we want it to be artist centric or, you know, focused on what the artists and art workers in the space are are hoping to achieve, um, which I think is quite different considering that one, it's at a fair context and two, yep. it's in the NFT world, which, you know, often people think about as like cash grab or like yep. people just think about the money that is involved as, yep. especially if you're you know just looking out from the outside and you're just reading uh what media is telling you mm. so i think in those kinds of contexts it was at least for me personally it was like wow like this is massive validation that like we're just you know kids <laughs> kind of <laughs> Using Discord from our <laughs> oh, homes. I'm, I'm old. I'm, I'm 31. No one would assist. <laughs> All right, we're uh, kids at heart using, yep. yeah, and then, you know, having this, like, dream running on passion and mm-hmm. ideals and, and this could happen for us. That kind of made me feel like, wow, that maybe there's something here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, maybe I can talk a little bit about, like, the people that we met. Yeah, of in, course. Uh, Dubai. Like, so um the crowd that was a uh, sort of um present at art dubai are the traditional like collectors mm. so sort of walking around the, the the contemporary art and modern art um spaces people were talking with about nfts in the you know in the background in, uh, along the walkways and things like that um and then when we when they got to the nft side or the digital art side you know um there was still a lot of um nascent questions i guess um, if I buy the NFT, does the TV come with it? Um, yep, yep. You know, and 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 these sort of questions that we cont- continuously feel that um, meant that um, actually digital art is still not um, um, doesn't doesn't have a, a strong enough structure or a, or, or a large enough education mm. amongst the traditional collectors um, and the people who really uh, were interested and in, and in, and were fascinated with the work that they saw were kids. 
and mm. were younger the, the younger generation we had we, I think Clara Clara very um was very good at entertaining the kids uh you know talking to okay. <laughs> <laughs> a natural it is they're just yeah. they're so honest yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. they're fun anyway go back yeah. To- <laughs> yeah. no and and it was yeah it was like it's their space like it's mm. going to be the future generation space they're used to digital money they're used to seeing art um, or illustration or 3D models or games on the internet online um, and you know beyond that like this is their uh, this is what they're going to grow into yep. so uh, and NFTs provide an opportunity to 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 monetize that yeah I'm curious to know what are your personal takeaways from that trip oh that's a big question you can chop it you can take half uh, each <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 no, yeah. you go, you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, it's the first time um, that we flew after COVID. Um, yes. Wow, it was, it was, was big that? and a lot of different. <laughs> yeah. I've never been to a desert before, I have ne- you? No, yeah. I, have, oh, yeah. I have not, exactly. <laughs> I have so. never been so high up on a man-made structure. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's the same, yeah. So, oh my God, like, it was so surreal flying out of Singapore. I think that was the that that click of oh I'm on a plane. Oh wait, there's turbulence. And, then, <laughs> yes. you know, and, and there was a lot of turbulence on that flight. <laughs> exactly. And, okay. and, and and like it felt like a switch had been turned off or turned on. Or okay. Like, is this the new like is is this what we've all been waiting for? So back to life. Yeah. yeah. Is this the new normal, or is it like the new normal from the old normal? And it's like, what's the what's normal yep. anymore? So, and then reaching there and real realizing that, um, and looking at what Dubai is actually, it's yep. like it was. Uh, I think we went up to the Burj Khalifa. We were looking at some of the old images. 20, 2005 complete desert and mm. looking at how man just it's ridiculous yeah, yeah just created this out of nowhere so yeah i mean that was that was sort of the the so being in that space was thinking like wow people can create so many things and, and you know um and it seems like we have sort of overcome covid to some extent mm. um people were uh, on the streets you didn't need like it's okay not to wear a mask. Yep. Um. In 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 the um indoors as well. If if you would if you didn't wear a mask, no one would come to you and scold you or yep. anything like that. So, yep. it sort of felt like normality. Yep. Yeah. And there was a first normality after COVID or mm. or during COVID. I, yeah. I don't know. It's anymore. refreshing. It yeah. sounds very refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I guess <laughs> from like the art fair side, I think we saw one thing was like, wow, like there is still a lot of education to be made or to be had. Um, like because even though we both work across like other kind of industries or like I my work is predominantly in the traditional contemporary art world and Ernest also has a contemporary art practice that he's had long before NFT is as well. Um, but you know, because we're both so plugged in with the NFT space currently, and so many, I think, of our conversations have been dominated by NFTs, sometimes there is an illusion that, or at least like this week or last week, I've been feeling like, oh my God, everywhere I go, everyone's talking about NFTs and, you know, everyone wants to talk about it or know about it. And that's really great for like the space growing in general, if, you know, artists are able to gain from it. Um, But you sometimes forget just how much more education yeah. or how much more conversations, research, learning in general is needed. Um, and I think being at Art Dubai, that kind of reminded us, right, like there is a lot more work here to be done. Um, I think it was a way also for me personally, at least very refreshing to see uh, for, you know, because we had five artists who are, uh, who are whose works were being shown who are also present there at the booth, which is quite rare for a booth set, uh, art fair setting. Interesting. Usually okay. it's your galleries, your mm. representatives, your dealers mm. who are mainly there. The artists might also be there, but they're not really there all the time yep. because uh, you know they, they may not be the ones who have to do all that work with mm. like networking, connecting with your clients, so on. Um, we had the artists there all the time because the artists are also part of the organizers. <laughs> <laughs> they help put everything together, yep. but also because I think like for me personally, um, I thought it was great that the artists could have that opportunity to meet with people who yep. came up to our booth and came up to like 
you know, their work and was like, whoa, I love this. And then get to have that in-person interaction with like a complete stranger yep. um, and getting that kind of physical validation, I think is very special. And I think for, you know, maybe I'm speaking on behalf of the artist now, but um, <laughs> at least like for someone who, you know, works so closely with them, I feel like that was really nice to witness and really beautiful to remember what it's like to to be able to have that connection with someone like through your artwork just you're from completely different places you lead completely yep. independent lives yep. and you're connecting because they resonate with something that you created yep. they understand what you're trying to get at and they have a genuine want to just like want to talk to you about it yep. or find out more about it and that's kind of like the ideal right that's in, in some ways yeah. yeah we're art lovers like, <laughs> we, we, we love romantic it. even yeah, yeah. We, we love art. I love art. so before i move the conversation to talk about nfts um i'm curious to know why was it important to keep the organization non-profit was it always the intention from the beginning because i think that's uh that's a very hard uh that's that's basically a line in the sand like it's going to be non-profit uh we're going to find ways to to raise funds as if for trips and stuff like that yeah, yeah. Oh man, this is another heart hitting question because um, we're continuously exploring and asking ourselves is this is the right organizational structure mm. for the direction that this community should grow towards. I think we're always trying to figure that out as well. Um, I don't know. I mean, so far, I think, at least for myself personally, um, keeping it nonprofit has um allowed us to really pursue work and project and community building that isn't rooted in profit or isn't mm -hmm. rooted in like profit opportunities and in some ways i think that allows us to keep our intentions um simple mm -hmm. and it's really thinking about okay like how to bring people together you know how to make sure everyone's having a good time how to make sure that um, we can be as useful and resourceful for the artists that we want to work with as much as possible yep. um especially in an economy where you know you're combating with a lot of other discord communities are often run by say like collectible projects yep. or other kinds of projects um where engagement someone's attention and time can potentially lead to profit opportunities for individual users um but then it, in that climate being able to maintain something that is about art or that is about mutual connection mm -hmm. um i think is truly remarkable and yeah that's something that i've personally um been really interested to see and explore but i think from an organizational standpoint or from like the core team standpoint you've also thought a lot about this like in terms of labor because yep. we're all most of us are like arts workers or mm. working in like creative industries and across our jobs you know we've always had issues with like what is fair pay what yep. is ethical conditions of work um have people been compensated what time to meet <laughs> <laughs> fair fair question <laughs> yeah and you know, because we haven't been compensated for any of the work that mm. we've done for this group, um, that means we can do things that are really just because we like it and we believe in it and we want to see it happen. Um, but it also means that when the work becomes greater, when the pressure is on, um, sometimes it can be hard to continuously ask ourselves or ask each other yep. to put in that work, especially when you're taking time away from, say, someone marketing themselves as an nft artist someone mm. that is focusing on paid work yep. or someone that needs time for rest and yep. other things yep. you know so i think there are a lot of tensions there that we're still trying to entangle um but at the core of it it's because we do see value in running a community um that isn't centered on money yep that's really commendable yeah Ernest? No, I, what, whatever you said <laughs> like, I completely agree I, I, yeah it's just yeah, beautiful I felt, I felt emotional <laughs> yeah. um, so the idea of NFTs is strangely quite controversial and there's a lot of nuanced takes on what it means what it means to different people I'm just curious to know what does the idea of NFT mean to each of you um before I got into the space, um, yeah, I always tell the story. I think like it was it was not NFTs that got me into the space first. It was 
um, looking at my bank account in twen- at the end of 2020 and, and seeing that my interest was 40 cents. Okay. Uh, and, okay. S- and just figuring out, oh, wait, what? Like, the bank is not doing anything for 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 my mm. like for my money uh, i need to i need to do an education yep. on on like my finances so yep. like it was a wake up call in at the end of 2020 so I, were you I, drunk when you saw it and you, uh, <laughs> okay. no, 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 i'm just no. curious okay, okay no 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 i, okay. I, I I'm, I'm very, very bad with alcohol okay so, uh, yeah. okay okay i just had to ask yeah. no no yeah so i was like no what the hell okay. it's like this is this is not right this yep. is insane like it's not even combating any kind of inflation. Mm. Like forty cents is not going to <laughs> buy me anything. So, so I was, I, I was, I was just completely jaded. I was like, okay, I need to do an an education in finance, and and so I, 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 I started reading up on 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 the stock market. I started reading up on 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 investment like um products. I started inv- looking at um robo advisors. I started looking at and anything that 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 sort of made sense um where can i put my money so then my money can work for me right yep um and then of course everyone i think sort of went into the oh people sale and then oh what is nfts i think mm. that was the the that that really big kick uh as much as it was, was a big headline and and as much as um it i mean it was it's centered around singapore so is, to some extent because mm. of medical one so yep. um there was a big kick. Oh, okay. What is NFTs? And I started researching, and I, I, to some extent, I guess I have some background or some knowledge in 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 digital stuff uh, or digital creation. So I started. Okay, what can I just upload? And you know, but at the same time, um, sort of respect the space. I was, I, I mean, coming from an art background, um, you don't do things just because it's fashionable, right? Yep. Yeah. You, Unfortunately. You, uh, yeah. Yeah. So so. I was quite clear. I think very early on, if I was uploading something as as an NFT, that it should not exist in the real world because they're okay. two different um, things mm. in some ways, two different objects, two different. Uh, as much as one something is digital, uh, but or physical, it's it's objects, right? Yep. Yeah. So that was sort of my approach uh, to NFTs, and and I think along the way. Um, I started revisiting some old ideas, um, some uh, concepts that I previously had um, as digital work, as sli- slightly photographic work as well, uh, as video or, or moving image work as well, that that sort of, oh, wait, I can actually revisit this idea that I've had um, since 2018 or 2016 and, yep. and, and convert or, or, or make that into an NFT. So that was sort of my thinking process. Um, um, I didn't see it as an investment vehicle. I didn't see it as a, uh, a way to sell art quickly because I was used to not selling art for years. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, okay. I, I, okay. Uh, in the traditional way, yep. I, I put up a show, yep. none of it gets sold. Yep. Uh, one of it gets sold. Um, two years down the line, oh, um, I saw your work two years ago. Maybe I want it now. And mm. then oh, two years later, it gets sold. Yep. So. I haven't done a lot of sales in the in the physical sense as well, but it it's sort of, uh, it's always a longer process uh, to do physical uh, work and physical art and 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 put it up for sale and do an exhibition for that, uh, as opposed to something that's really quick. Um, mm. I can, if I have concept, if an if I have an idea, I can iterate very quickly. Yep. Uh, and if I want to sell it, I can put it up. Um, within a day. Yep. I don't have to do an exhibition. I don't have to. Uh, you know, so that that gave me a little bit of a, uh, um, along with everything else, in the sense that uh, I was trying to make money at the time as well. So it it sort of shortened my my creative process. A yep. little, yeah, there was an urgency to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now in twenty twenty two, has have you found a solution to combat? inflation <laughs> uh, no we're all like we're all fucked <laughs> we're all fucked unfortunately okay yeah okay. i think yeah i don't i don't know what's happening in the world it's hard to keep up as well um mm. i think uh, there was a statistic of seven percent inflation um per year that's what they tell you <laughs> uh in the u.s and and it, and, and uh, my, my tay is now 150 um, yep. when it used to be one dollar or 90 cents yep. um everywhere yep. and and so like you can see that on a on a day to day basis, and and you you realize that your money is just not, it's yeah, it's not yeah. it's it's gonna go to to some kind of zero. Yep. Yeah. Clara, what what about you? What what yeah. does NFT mean to you? Now I'm just thinking about 
my money going to some kind of zoo. (laughs) (laughs) I guess for me, um, well, I came into the NFT space really because I was assigned to write a piece on it um, about art artists kind of in Southeast Asia and NFTs. And that was also what brought us together to then form NFT Asia. Um, I think from a curatorial like point of view, we're just thinking about my slightly longer term research interests. I've also been more drawn towards the digital. Um, so I was interested in like cyber feminism mm-hmm. or in, you know, like AI and art and thinking about um, what it means for artists to be moving into or moving further into this digital space, digital imagination and so on. Yep. And I have an economics background, so I've always mm-hmm. leaned towards the art market as well. Like I'm very curious and interested in, <laughs> in you have how an economics background <laughs> and you don't know your inflation. <laughs> Okay, it's macroeconomics. Okay. I was interested in micro. I didn't see the bank interest. <laughs> yeah, but I was always interested in like the art market. Mm. So like I was always doing research around like auction prices and these kinds of things. I'm very curious about art pricing or how those dynamics play out. Yep. So NFTs just was like, oh, it's kind of at the intersection of a lot of my interests. Um, And at the same time, I think as someone who is like a young, aspiring curator, um, I think it makes sense to be plugged into whatever you see that could potentially change or um, open up parallel or new kind of conversations or ecosystems surrounding the contemporary art world. Yeah. Um, like when the people so happened, it was like, okay, maybe this is a fad, maybe it mm. isn't. But nonetheless, you know, it's got us talking about digital art illustration or 3D in a different light. Yep. Now there is a more viable market for transacting, collecting um, digital art which there wasn't so much of before. Yep. Um, and so there probably is going to be some kind of movement here that is going to be relevant to, you know, the near to future term course of yep. like contemporary art systems globally. Okay, so let's look at that. Yep. <laughs> and also just because I think digital practices are interesting, mm. I don't understand too much of it. So I'm very fascinated by it and seduced by it. <laughs> um, so I thought, all right, time to learn about it. Yep. Um yeah, so I guess for me, NFTs really meant a lot of these different things. Yeah. And that's why I'm still super interested and curious about the space. Yeah, I think just quickly to add on to that, um, when uh, it really gave people who worked in the digital space a place to monetize. I think mm. if you were doing 3D work before, it was just you were uploading things on DeviantArt and yep. selling posters, selling prints, selling yep. postcards. Um, but now you could sell an actual room. You can sell an actual 3D model. You know, um, I think the NFTs is just the the sort of medium that allowed that to happen, allowed that marketplace to open up, um, which gave a lot of um, uh, agency, I guess, to to artists who have already been in this space for quite some time, um, illustrators, uh, uh, any kind of digital um, um, creation. I think I, I think there's something to be said as well that it happened. Uh, a little bit opportune as well. Uh, I mean, it's bad to say that, but COVID gave people a time to stay at home to do all this as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at, say, like art market trends since like 2016 in particular, or that's what I can recall. Um, so there's like an online trade report, online art trade report that comes out every year by Hitchcock. And since like that kind of time period, we have been observing more and more people being interested in buying or collecting art, um, being introduced to it via digital means, such as Instagram. Mm. Um, you also saw upticks on, say, like online auction platforms like Artsy um, and Paddle 8 or like some of these other um, online channels, marketplaces. Um, and then, of course, the pandemic, which brought forth you know, a lot more interest and understanding of what digital economies, digital ways of transacting mm. um, could mean for us. And so, you know, I think that threshold towards like, Buying things digitally, buying beautiful things or higher value things um, digitally has been increasing steadily and then accelerated by COVID um, and the whole pandemic. Um, So a lot of things have been like building in the background. And then, of course, like crypto markets uptake as well. Um, A lot of things that, you know, made this even more possible. Mm -hmm. 
I think also to caveat that like NFTs don't solve all the problems that digital artists face. It's still really hard actually to be successful as an artist within mm -hmm. the NFT market. But it does offer this alternative that wasn't as viable as accessible before. It's like if you were a digital artist um, or an artist working with um, technological like mediums, say moving image or a video piece yep. and you um were going to sell that work to a collector which has been done for years um what you might do is give them a usb or yeah maybe ernest can talk more about that uh, a usb a well-designed box uh, a manual for um, installing the work uh, a certain size screen and a certain size resolution um you know like um, beautifully packaged. Um, that yep. would be the the high end stuff, and then yep. if it's the low end stuff, it's just yeah. Here, time drive. Here's the yeah. time drive. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. And it's hard to maintain scarcity on that, and if there isn't scarcity, then there isn't really market value. So that's why you haven't really been seeing a lot of secondary market activity for digital art, if of any kind of digital mediums yep. um and not that that is the only thing that dictates like collecting or investing but it is something people can consider um so you know with nfts obviously because it is structured like a financial market of sorts and it does um have like programmable scarcity which allows people to see like the market value of buying and then reselling something much easier mm. compared to this method that ernest just described um that has opened up these like economic opportunities. Yep. Yeah. I think the idea of scarcity is quite interesting because if you look at things online, um, it is generally in abundance for most things. And I, 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 I guess we are conditioned in a way that it is in abundance because there is no download limit for, let's say, Google Image. I mean, unless your bandwidth or whatever. There used to be that. But as technology improves, that is eliminated for some people. There's also a lot of talks about how NFTs kind of uh, implement this idea of digital scarcity. And it's a bit odd because you are trying to impose something where it should be free or it should be abundant for, for, for people. How do you feel about the idea of scarcity with regards to, I guess, art and collectible? Has it always been there and people are just uh, not that well informed about it? Yeah. Um, I think people want to own things mm. in general. Um, it doesn't matter if it's... Uh, physical or digital, um, the act of ownership means of feels in some ways um, that something belongs to you. Um, so it, I think in in the I guess the Web three kind of mindset um, or in the NFT space, collectors know. I think they are very clear that their their artworks that they own can be copied and saved and used anywhere else. Um, but at the same time, um, there is some, uh, there is a, uh, an idealistic kind of equity to that as well. It means that anyone who wants to access your work, um, the artist's work, uh, can see it. Mm. Um, it's not like that in the real world. Yeah. Um, if I buy a physical Mark Rothko, I put it in my house. Only uh, I can see it. Only yeah. I can yep. see it. So that, that I mean, there is an idealistic equity, like. Um, making it equitable for everyone to, to be able to access um, and the ledger is just one I guess one way of of, of creating uh, a kind of provenance creating a kind of um, 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 proof of ownership and and that's I think that's just that, like that's it <laughs> yeah I think economically <laughs> <laughs> because you know I'm so familiar no I'm kidding Um, but yeah like if something has infinite supply then why would anyone pay money for it mm. um so unless you can really implement a way like with nfts you're implementing some kind of program programmable scarcity yes to some degree it is artificial entirely um but without it it's like if everyone can own the same thing they don't need to pay for it right mm. um and you can like you can go on and right click and save something you can just screenshot it you can still enjoy it on your phone as yep. your wallpaper you can do whatever you want with it but you can't resell it because you don't own it or you can't be the person that has like the bragging rights of saying that i own it those kinds of things right and these things seem to drive the market yep. And this idea of bragging rights, or even like let's say have paying a lot of money for for something just for the idea of ownership, it's a lot. It's very intangible. There is no no perhaps no logical reason why anyone wants to spend millions on 
a painting or something else because if you dial everything back, let's say like the Mark, the Mark Rothko painting, it's just paint on canvas. Ultimately, yeah, but it's the prestige that goes with it. It's the act of buying it. It's I feel like everything. that's a little controversial as Mark Rothko is just made on canvas. No, <laughs> but, it, yeah. but, but it depends on what lens you, you're, you're looking at it because it has history. Everybody knows who he is. Everybody knows his history. Everybody knows the the struggles, the, the, the biography of the artist. All these things are part of the, the cake. Yeah. And even the act of, let's say, in the gallery, people viewing it, but you're the one buying, you're the one who owns it. You're the, you put it up to, 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 to showcase it. I think everything compounds. Everything is added into this equation of the price. Yeah. yeah. And the story plays a, a big part of it, I guess. Um, like you talk, I mean, you immediately you mentioned biography of Mark Rothko. Uh, and it's the same in the digital space. Like um, um, discerning collectors will talk to to the artists that they mm. collect, um, go through with them, like, you know, what have you done before? What is the story you're telling here? Mm. Does it resonate with me? Um, if it doesn't, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to yep. support, but yep. it's fine. Um, someone else will resonate with it. Yep. So it's it's also finding uh, an audience that you you did not um, necessarily would be able to connect to. Um, in the real world, you, ha- you need physical spaces to connect to these mm. people. Uh, but in the online space, a, sim- a simple tweet, uh, uh, um, a casual post uh, can get you noticed by someone. Mm. So uh, it's, I guess different ways of, of connecting yep. with, with, with other people. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know, are there, have you encountered any misconceptions about NFTs? All the time. All the time. Do you think they have, what, what, what might these misconceptions be rooted in? I the media is one big problem. What 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 does the media do? That's that's the problem. Uh, bad research. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for example, I I I uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a contentious topic. But uh, like uh, Gozali, let's say, um, a lot of the media reports were were um talking. Oh, he made one million dollar in sales and and things like that. But if you go down and and look at the ledger. If you look at what he was selling at, um, the the story is like half told. He sold the work at like barely like a few dollars or something like that, a few cents. Um, it's the secondary market that um gave him that one million. Yep. And but not even one million. So it was volume traded. What does that mean? Um, it it means that um one million dollars have exchanged hands. Uh, a total of one million. Yes, yeah. okay. exactly. Regardless of primary or secondary, secondary. and number of times it's changed hands. I right? understand. Okay. Yeah. So it could be like a dollar, a dollar, a million times. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah. So what happened was that um, people saw the volume traded and equated that to sales made. Gotcha. So they were like questioning, why is Gozali selling at, like why is he selling his home pictures at like thousands of dollars, mm. but it's not him, it's other people who have bought. Uh, a specific uh, token uh, and, and specific um, um, JPEG that is selling at that prices. So the listing price is not the selling price, if yep. you if, if you will. Um, so, and then and then if you dial it back and you, you sort of look back at it again, 1 million volume traded means that he only actually made 100,000. Because of? Secondary royalties. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. So... Uh, like that misconception, oh, you can make you know money in the space very quickly. Uh, you can make a million dollars. No, 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 no. Like, yep. you, you, <laughs> there, there's a lot that goes behind it. That that um, yeah, like bad research. It's just really just bad research. Um, people um using the term NFT artist, which I I'm still like, <laughs> like it's there's it's no a such misnomer. Yeah, it's a misnomer. Mm. Uh, there's no such thing as an NFT artist. There's artists who work with NFTs. Um, mm. There's digital artists who work with NFTs yep. um, because it's just a, a medium for transaction. Yeah. yeah. Except in some cases. Except in some cases. Uh, what, um, what cases might those be? Where like, you know, it's on-chain. Or it's uh, like on-chain generative art or yeah. like some um, mechanism of the token in itself yep. or it's like smart contract, so on, actually has to do with the work itself. Uh, then that is truly using NFT as a medium. But yeah. Yeah, so... I think this um uh if you use the smart contract as the medium so you, you can technically upload something that's um on chain um with poems so you can upload a poem that is on chain that is on the ledger yep uh and is reflected that way so that's 
kind of NFT art. But it's, it's it's poetry that is an NFT, is yep. it? So I I guess that's the definition. We're really getting into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess also just sensationalization in general, right? Like in media, because there's been so much interest about NFTs and everyone's mm. curious about what it can mean. Um, so I think there is a general desire as well from us to know about, oh, like who's done really well in NFTs or yeah. what kind of revolutionary change has it brought? Um, and so you keep reading about, uh, well, I guess two main kinds of narratives or at least that I've seen one is like oh wow look at this 17 year old painting out of his bedroom and now is like a multi-millionaire um which is maybe like the 0.0001 percent of the reality of what artists in the space experience and then if not then it's like the complete oh my god nfts all scams Mm. all cash grabs you know do not get involved everything is horrible um so I think it's, been, it's, it's, yeah, I think these are most of the um, things that, you know, we often encounter when people are asking us about NFTs and some of the misconceptions that they have. But at the same time, recognizing that the space is so nascent, you know, the NFTs in itself, this technology has been around for less than a decade. Mm. Um, even the kind of early ideological seats that people trace back to in like 2014, this idea of digitizing mon- like graphics obviously has been a Around for some time, but um, the technology as we know it today, the market as we know it today is fairly new. And mm. it takes people a lot of time to understand something like this. I mean, blockchain in itself has been around for a longer time than NFTs. And yet still there are a lot of misconceptions about it because it's so abstract. It can be so mater- immaterial and it just takes people time to understand new technology, period. Mm. Um so yeah, I think we're just these are just you know teething pains. So. <laughs> yeah, I I think and and because NFTs are so um tied to art to some extent mm. in the media, um that NFTs cannot be something else. So like NFTs are just non fungible tokens. They they can be technically pegged to um real estate. They can be pegged to to a table. Mm. They can be pegged to uh, a website. Yep. Can, so the the forms of which um, the NFT can can um, dictate um, a kind of ownership or, or, or provenance. It's not just art, or it's not just um, collectibles. It's yep. not just um, 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 yeah. There's there's more applications to that that um, leads into finance, uh, leads into decentralized finance. Um, yeah, I think yeah. I'm curious to know in each of your individual journeys in this particular space, has have you ever had a misconception about it that you realize perhaps through research down, down the line, you guys thought, oh, that, that was that was a wrong way about thinking about it. And you guys changed your viewpoint. I could go first. When I was first introduced to NFTs, it was 2020. Someone showed me a crypto kitty on their phone mm. and was like, I own art on my phone. Yeah. And I was like, that's really great for you. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't understand it at all. And just when I saw the cat and they're like, oh, it's breedable. This is like a Gen Zero and you can have like founder kitties and all of that. I was like, okay, sounds like neopets yeah. <laughs> but like money and yeah. like crypto yeah. um and i just thought it doesn't sound like things that i'm personally interested in or even aligns with like my personal politics or philosophies and mm. so on mm. um and then i was talking to actually someone who was trying to get into like art or thinking about how could she could sell her art online um about a month ago before I was working on that essay and I just randomly was like telling this person, oh, you should look at Crypto Kitties. Apparently people are doing art things and selling it <laughs> and like blockchain. Um, and then she got really interested and then she started chasing it down and like trying to find out about it. And I was like, oh, if she finds it interesting, maybe I should be taking a second look. Maybe I shouldn't have been that judgmental about it. And then voila came like the assignment hey do you want to write a piece on nfts um and i was like okay someone told me about this cat right so i can find out about it and that was right before the people sale as well um and obviously my thoughts about the space my thoughts about the technology and nfts in itself have changed a lot (laughs) they have evolved Mm. i would say you know, a little. Um, You're getting a hardware wallet. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, yes, a very late. Don't tell people that. <laughs> it took me so long. 
Yeah. So, you know, I, I get it because I'm from that camp of people mm -hmm. who used to be very dismissive of NFTs because I thought it was just money making. Yep. And I was like, I'm not that interested in it. Right. Like I care about the art, but I just hadn't looked enough. So, yeah. So what has helped you uh, change your mind about it? Is it just having an open mind and just looking into things more in depth or is it something else? meeting people like Ernest. Oh, yeah. like Ernest Thank was. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ernest was like one of the first artists I spoke to mm -hmm. when I started researching for this article and I was truly lost at the time. I didn't really know where to look. And Ernest, I think we were exchanging over email. He wrote me like an essay and <laughs> really told me about, you know, what he found interesting, what he was trying to grapple with. Um, and John, uh, Jonathan Liu, <laughs> whom I believe you're was speaking to um did similarly mm. as did speak cryptic yep. and other artists and it you know prompted me to think okay like these people around me are you know really looking into this and thinking about this beyond the economics of it mm. so i probably should too and then at that like around that same time as well started to look into our art, art projects that happen on the blockchain or kind of artistic exploration and research and then realized that there was a whole world behind it mm. that I just hadn't looked into and because you know I I had told myself oh I wanted to look into like digital imagination and cyber <laughs> feminism and, and all of that yep. stuff I was yep. like oh this hello chase this down mm. yeah what about you Ernest um I I don't know I as a person I just do a lot of research uh, okay be <laughs> before doing anything okay so like like I, I took a year to research what headphones to buy before buying my headphones. I'm glad you finally <laughs> came to a decision. <laughs> yeah, so so it was it, it was more um like I I I needed to know uh what exactly it was that I was getting into before getting into it. Mm. So that was that was sort of how. Um, yeah, it's just my approach to 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 that. So, so also, what convinced you then? Um, what convinced me? Wow. Hmm, I haven't been asked that question before. I, I I just I don't know, I just fell into it in some ways. Okay. Um in, in some ways I sort of responded to it in some ways as well. Okay. Uh in the sense that whatever was happening around me I could sort of um channel into a new body of work. Mm -hmm. So that was just sort of like a oh um I can't like I like to shoot landscapes. I, I um a lot of my work sort of deals with spaces. Um, going out into the world and 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 walking, um, yep. and, you know. But um, now I'm not walking. Now I'm not like I I don't have that agency to do that. Um, what kind of creations or what? How can I still think about art making or um, um talking about the space that I'm currently in? Yep. Uh, in a digital way, in a in 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 a more um, um moving image. Uh, uh, but sort of also using photography. Yep. Um. Yeah, so that was just sort of a way that I fell into it. Um, a lot of my work deals with like perception um, or how we perceive things. Um, so like one of my work, loading, loading is is just our experience of of um, looking at an image and then not having that image appear. Um, it's just constantly loading and forever loading. Yep. Um, and you don't know why. You know? Yep. <laughs> yep. So yeah, I think that 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 really just yeah that that was how I I. I I didn't need convincing. I just sort of fell into it. So yeah. as a creator, would you say the space and the underlying technology of it, would you say it's inspiring to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know life is inspiring. Oh, wow. I mean... I, you I, can I, take that to your grave. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a two story. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, life is inspiring. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the then it, was, it would be over. Come again? <laughs> if I take it to my grave? Yeah. What, what do you mean? It would be over. I can I can mint it on the blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I have to go. <laughs> yeah, no, I I mean, yeah, life is inspiring because like I create, uh, like I make art, I make work, I guess, and and NFTs was just an, uh, a way to share that. Mm. So um, yeah, I didn't need convincing. It was just it, it came naturally. Yeah. Okay. So, Clara, as a curator, how are you feeling? the space and the technology how is it different from traditional art showcasing in galleries in terms of displaying or curating uh, works perhaps from a macro view like 
when you are curating a show, now that there's this technology, how do you find a divide? Do you have a bit of both? Do you skew it one way to another? Do you have need to have a different concept if it's purely for NFTs? Yeah. What what are you looking at, let's say, when you want to curate a show in 2022, knowing that there's this technology, there are different groups out there doing NFTs? Yeah. Well, okay, and maybe this is a bit controversial. I don't know. But this is like my personal way of working because I see myself as someone who would like to curate both offline and online or on-chain and off-chain. So like as a person, my interests are across like the traditional quote unquote uh, contemporary art world as well as the nft kind of market um, but also whatever is happening artistically explorations research so on um i don't see them to be very separate or different um i don't really see there to be a different kind of criteria or mm. rigor uh, that should be expected or that i should be trying to uphold within um when i'm creating works regardless of whether it's like a physical exhibition or it's an nft exhibition so on um yeah so to me it's not that different i feel like through nfts and particularly through my very fortunate role of being in like nft asia that i get introduced to a lot of different artists all the time and you know i learn about new artists with new practices that um with new tools that i'm personally wasn't familiar with before so i feel like now i've just built up like um a larger vocabulary of uh i guess contemporary art or a larger understanding of of you know artists that are working in this global system beyond the big names or the canonical names that i knew of before but also when you consider like exhibition history mm. um, surrounding digital and new media art. Um, I think there's a lot of learnings that can be taken from those exhibitions that were really immersive, were really interesting, and port that over to how we might curate, say, physical exhibitions of works that are minted as NFTs. Um, because essentially, as Ernest said, they're digital art or... Sometimes, you know, it might be physical works that point to some kind of on-chain culture or on-chain-ness. Um, but ultimately, they're, they're artworks. Yep. And so from my point of view, like I try to treat them as the same. Like um, An example of that maybe is last November, I uh, had the opportunity to curate an exhibition, Right Click and Save. Mm -hmm. It was held inside of Left Report in Singapore. Mm -hmm. It was a collaboration with CoinHako and Appetite. <laughs> and um, that was my first uh, opportunity to really uh, curate and execute an exhibition of like a slightly larger scale in person. Um, and the prompt that we were kind of working with was um, important artworks that could kind of reflect a portion of crypto art history. Um, wow. Okay. So, <laughs> yep. And at the same time, we worked with uh, big collectors in the space because mm. on the second level, we also wanted to talk about uh, what collecting and patronage could look like in the space, what it could open up. Uh, for like the contemporary art systems at large yep. so in that exhibition I had some of the works as prints framed mm -hmm. prints hung up on the walls you know very like traditional yep. um, some of the works I had displayed in like CRTs because I felt that that was the mode that um, they looked good in that was suitable to the nature of the work mm -hmm. um, some of the works as like large projections because that was what you know, they seem to fit best, so yep. on. So I think it, it's the same kind of criteria. Like whenever you're curating something um, personally, and, I, and it's not some kind of like official pedagogy of sorts or <laughs> any of that, I don't really have that background or um, that kind of training. But I think you're just thinking about what is the best context that I can create or put this work within that allows a conducive environment to mm. view the work? And then between work, each of the works, the kind of environment you then put them in, in like a room, what kind of, you know, situation or narrative can I create or can I highlight um, that would allow people to have a positive, um, engaging experience with the work? And I think that's the same. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, that's the same, no matter like physical or digital and the nature of the work, so on. Gotcha. Yeah. How was it like uh, communicating with the collectors of these NFTs? Because I think with the space and I guess more of the philosophy behind it, they tend to be pseudo-anonymous. They might not be too open to talking about identities. How, how was it like communicating with these collectors and telling them, oh, I want to showcase it for like a show in Singapore and stuff like that? Yeah. 
I mean, I was lucky in that some of the collectors um, were either partners of like CoinHako, mm. the, co- the um, main organizer um, that connected us, or actually quite a few of the collectors I worked with were docs, like they were using their real name and identities, and they are very engaged in like the crypto ecosystem um, already. And I have been connected to some of them via like writing or just been introduced in different contexts. Yep. Um, I did work with a pseudonym um, collector that uh, I didn't really have a relationship with before. Um, and in the beginning, uh, I think we just had to really introduce what our intentions were. Yep. And I think after a few back and forths, it became clear that like you know our intentions were genuine we really just wanted to create like a good exhibition um and so it wasn't so difficult but i would say that it was a little different uh working with say like nft collectors and uh traditional collectors or like very established collectors within the contemporary art world um just because I think for some of the collectors um, that they maybe haven't worked with curators who work in like a tread art setting as often. Mm -hmm. Um, And so some of the practices that we may put in place um, were new to them. It was like a new conversation to be had. Um, It was like new for me to explain certain things that I might have had to ask from like the artist or to discuss with the artist facilitated by the collector, blah, 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 like all these very logistical things yep. um, that, yeah, it was quite interesting and a learning journey as well to think about what it means in the future as collectors, you know, also our stewarders or they're the ones kind of um, protecting or, or have that responsibility of holding on to the work um, into the future. Yep. Right. And what will these relationships continue to look like um, as more of these collector shows may come about, as more of NFT works or works minted as NFTs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so much distinction. Yes, okay. maybe brought into, say, like institutional yep. context or mm-hmm. into like larger kinds of art exhibitions. Um, and yeah, a so lot of a lot of questions. So it sounds like it's an integration of these two things as opposed to uh doing away with institutions and traditional galleries and stuff like that so it's like integration of of everything for me yeah it's like i i think your traditional art world art market can very much still exist and is Mm. still very much important i mean i still work in it full time Mm. um and i think that you know from the nft side of it i feel like there is a lot for us to learn in terms of say like how we organize ourselves as an artist collective or as a community, there's a lot we can learn from communities or good collectives that have existed prior, right? Like the art, like art market has existed for a much longer time than NFT markets have. So has art history and the tools, the skills, the language with which you use to describe or talk about art Mm. doesn't have to change, you know, specifics like the medium yep. or how do you look at things because like the underlying concepts and cultures are different can evolve but it doesn't have to be a doing away entirely with all of the things that have been developed before you in fact i think they can be built upon there are so many learnings we can take mm. um from this side of the world and vice versa yep. i think personally that institutions organizations and the tread art kind of side of the conversation can also have a really big role to play in terms of supporting research, supporting, say, like non-selling exhibitions, um, supporting artistic exploration and experimentation of like a longer term, you know, so like your grants, fellowships, residencies, so on, these kinds of more quote unquote traditional structures and opportunities for artists are still being played out in the NFT space and are still very beneficial for artists, regardless of which system they're more plugged into. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to know, what have you noticed uh, movements? Have you noticed any movements in the traditional art spaces that you're plugged into? Because I think with, I think the, there's a lot of headlines about, oh, uh, a s- certain NFT collections making like headline sales from a traditional art market. So I'm curious to know, what have you been observing? What, what is, are there any movement towards a certain direction or are they still doing their research as to what, how, how they want to implement the technology into their own practice? Yeah. Um, I guess coming from the, art, I, I guess from the artist side, um, people have been asking, us uh oh you so you do uh you you're on nft asia uh so you know how to do nfts um can you teach me how so okay uh, like um you know 
um, f- galleries coming and actually wanting to learn mm. about what this space is about, um, how to navigate it. Um, yeah, so there's interest. Uh, and you can see that as well. I mean, and Art Dubai when we were there, um, that there's interest in for traditional galleries to 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 have some kind of um, digital um, like um, digital knowledge in, in in some way, um, and know at least on the surface or at least um, that that this is happening and yep. that maybe I should maybe I can get into it. Mm. So that's that's sort of where it's it's sort of hovering now and then you have larger institutions like Christie's and all these doing mega auctions uh, but like I, I'm not too not too into that so the question is how do we see like collecting or collection building evolve what or? have you observed about um the movements in uh, traditional art spaces are they moving are they embracing NFTs are they trying to integrate the technology into the own practice. I'm just curious, what have you observed? Mm, I think there are a lot of different perspectives and and, and stances or decisions. Mm. Um, but I think there are definitely institutions in the sense of like museums, cultural centers, um, foundations that are very much interested in looking into nfts or some that have already been looking at nfts or have played a role in supporting artist explorations on blockchain so those definitely exist and mm-hmm. i think they should continue to do the work that they do to support research yep. to push for critical discourse um you know because i think those things are really fundamental and helpful mm. to the growth and like health of the space as like an artistic ecosystem um And then in terms of the market side of things, I think you see quicker adoption, right? Because it's a market and you understand that there is a new, perhaps like there's new sources of cash flow Mm. um, and it makes sense. It makes logical sense to then follow those directions and understand, okay, where is this money coming from and how can it support our ecosystems? Um, Which I think is also really important and not talked about enough in terms of sustaining a healthy, sustainable our ecosystem to have diversified like funding sources and so on. Um, Yeah. So you do see a lot of quicker adoption in the market side of things, but of course there are also a lot of people who are very averse and, you know, reject NFTs and um, the kind of hyper financialization commodification Mm. that they bring about, which I think is also totally fair, but doesn't mean that they should reject or not look at digital art and the works that are being created um, and perhaps participating in this conversation. Yeah. Interesting. I think the the fact that artists, art institutions are kind of embracing uh, and even like doing like mega auctions kind of remind me of uh, in the early 90s when I think they started showcasing a lot of like graffiti artists in the museums because they saw the impact, the cultural impact they were having. And they kind of elevated these artists to be like superstars. And then there was street art and they started showcasing. It seems kind of similar. Not an NFT artist a movement, but I think they're just going with the flow. There seems to be moment because of, of new interests, of renewed interest from a different base of people that might have cash and it's cash flow ultimately. I think also from like a museum and exhibition history side of things, um, for decades, museums, um, especially some that have interest in digital and new media and technological history, have been looking at digital art, how to collect digital art, Mm. how to preserve digital art history for a while now. Mm. Um, And so NFTs for them would be a natural extension that, you know, it is part of their prerogative uh, to continue working with artists that work of digital mediums. And if they enter the blockchain or if they enter NFTs, then it also makes sense to look at them and support them. Um, So I think that this history has existed prior to Mm. NFTs. um, But from yeah, for for other kind of entities and so on, it also makes sense that um, you know, they're moving into it because they also see that this could um, support the space financially. Interesting. I'm curious to know, um, are there any beliefs about the technology or NFTs in general that y'all disagree with? Because NFTs, the underlying uh, circuitry of that is Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all different uh, cryptocurrencies. And I think Bitcoin started off as a very like uh, antithesis to the financial system. And it has that background. 
so I'm curious to know, like, are there any beliefs about the space, like about uh, it being de- decentralized, it being stuff like that, that you all disagree with? Disagree with? Hmm. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure where to start. <laughs> <laughs> like its core ethos, like in blockchain? Yeah. F- from a technical side, um, from a storage side, uh, so, you know, we, when 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 something is uploaded onto the blockchain, we, uh, to some extent, uh, used to or uh, assume that the work will exist for as long as the servers yep. are up. Um, but the problem is there are some protocols or some um methods of storage that are not, uh, future proof or uh, that are stuck in some kind of. Um, or stuck with old technology mm. that perhaps is hard to scale and perhaps is hard to ad- update. So when people get down into the, I guess the nitty gritty of okay, I'm uploading an NFT. Um, as long as the network exists, technically my work exists, right? <laughs> uh, you know, but but the work sort of exists somewhere else. It doesn't exist on the blockchain. Mm. Um, the NFT just points, uh, sort of uh, points to an address for where the work exists. So it can exist technically on a Google Drive server. Um, but if Google, you know, decides that, oh, I'm going to close Google, um, then the server's technically, close, la, yeah, yep. and then the work is non-accessible anymore. Yep. So, um, um, and then you get into platforms as well because platforms, um, um, have a very s- crucial place where where people go to to buy, sell, and trade. Yep. Uh, and in one case, I guess OpenSea, if you mint uh, on the OpenSea contract and OpenSea is a company, um, their work is stored on Google Drive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if OpenSea as a company decides yep. that, oh, I'm, I'm bankrupt, yep. um, then technically anything that, any work that was minted on OpenSea will not exist anymore. Which is a vast majority. Which is quite a big uh, yeah, majority. So... I guess, and, and, and I think it comes back down to education. Um, there's a lot of misconception, a lot of um, um, education that needs to still be done. What is decentralized storage? How does it actually work? Mm. Um, can I trust it? Yep. Um, you know, and and um, I guess to some extent, a, a lot of people don't have that time to do all this research. Uh, and, and, and I feel like um, if any kind of disagreement, it's, it's more like the space is building as we speak mm. um, and we all will only see some kind of um, normalized form when all these problems are solved. Um, things like, um, um, like, I think like you mentioned, proof of work, proof of stake, um, like Bitcoin is proof of work um, and you know there's a sustainability issue yep. sort of built around that um, and then there are other um, networks that come up after that saying that, oh, we are, we are clean. We are clean. Yep. Um, but we're clean and but we sacrifice something. Yep. We sacrifice. Um. Cent- we 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 are centralized. So we actually have servers that run the network. Yep. But what if the servers go down? If the servers go down, yep. then your network doesn't exist anymore. So, um, you know, there's this sort of tension between. Oh, if I'm minting a work on um, um other chains, uh, that they are not Ethereum, uh, will that chain last long enough for my mm. work to to you know, to be. Uh, to exist beyond beyond myself, right? Yeah. Um, and that's the promise that sort of everyone's talking about. But uh, if you get into it, um, there's there's still a, a lot of problems that need to be solved. Yeah. And these are quite strange questions for an artist to be asking themselves because I think up to recently, let's say if I paint on a canvas and I take a picture and I post it on Instagram, that's it. That's kind of it. But right now, if I want to make like a sale or transaction, I want to post it for, as an NFT, I'll have to do a whole bulk of research into like what are different chains, what what is a cryptocurrency, and you go down that rabbit hole and then you realize, okay, but yes, technically, theoretically, it could be there forever, but to conceptualize forever and the servers and all the other shit, that is also quite confusing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 hard to navigate and 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 uh especially when 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 I try to explain it to people, uh they're like, wait, okay, wait. I thought NFTs was just hard. You know, mm. and and they're sort of uh, wait. What do you mean? It points to an address, um, and and you sort of have to break it down to to some kind of specific for them to suddenly that that click to happen. That oh wait, the work is just the work. The work is somewhere else. 
the NFT is just pointing to the work. Yep. So when that click happens, they 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 they're like, oh wait, okay, so this is what NFTs allow me to do, and then they start seeing, you know, um, being clear about what NFTs are and what they are not, uh, and how much more there is still to go, uh, in the space. Yeah. Interesting. Um. I'm curious to know what you guys collect. Because when when you guys are collecting, you guys are consumers. Is there a specific kind of art that attract is attractive to to you both? Yeah. I'm really not a collector. So gotcha. She, she collected my work, so <laughs> she's a collector in that way. Yes, I collect at Ernest's wow. work. Wow. Yeah, on Tezos. Um, I do collect very occasionally. Uh, more. You, you went on a spree. Well, that was because uh, on Tezos, on like, you know, the earlier days, um, it was on this like open source project called Hikek Nunk. Mm. Um, and uh, works were priced very, very affordably. Um, and I was like, oh, like how wonderful I can collect works and support artists um, at a very affordable rate. Right. Because I'm a I'm a curator. I don't work. I don't like, you know, I don't have a lot of money. <laughs> okay. I don't have a lot of investments, all of that. Right. So yeah. I'm not, not really um, able to like spend big money collecting um, one-on-one like rare NFTs on yeah. Ethereum and yeah. so on. But there are occasionally cases in which I think I come across some works and I just really love them. Like recently I bought a plotter drawing from this artist in Berlin that I have been eyeing for a year. Mm. And I finally kind of uh, saved enough money to uh, purchase it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I really love the um, the work. So I was, I told myself if I ever have enough at like, this is the threshold and I will buy it. Mm. Um, but I think it's, yeah. I mainly look at like one-on-one art um, and often by artists that are around me, artists that I have some kind of relationships with because mm. of NFT Asia or just on Twitter, whose practice is like interesting and curious to me. Um, but I'm not really a collector collector, more of like looking at it from research and interest. What about you, Ernest? Um, I'm a bit different. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I... I um, in terms of one of one artworks, I, I I think it's the same story with uh, Clara. I it was affordable on Hikak Nunk, and I is that how you pronounce it? Uh, is that like the, the universally agreed? I think so. Pronunciation or, 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 for it. Or, 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 There's Hikak Nunk, Hikak Nunk, Hikak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a different language. Uh, it's Latin. Yeah. yeah interesting. So, Fair. Okay, please continue. Uh, no, no, yeah. Okay. So it was it was and and I think Clara was a. Uh, uh, leading the charge in some way everyone's like talking about the other chains and it's like no hit and nung, look at hit and, nung, you know? and, and it was like, i didn't know anything I, mean, I, just, I just i follow like mario klingerman who's an ai artist based in germany and he was one of the first artists on it uh when it first started and i just thought wow how interesting how different um and i was like oh everyone look at this <laughs> yeah and and it was really like it felt like the start of something like this, the the website was janky. It was slow, but you could there was this endless scroll that you could just look at art, like look at crazy things that people have done, and like you know, like why, wow, like wait, what is this shit? You know, like yeah. So it was it's just going through all these emotions, and then you know that, that that I think I'm not sure about you, but it was that feeling of oh wait, this is something that I like, and is this something that I can afford? Maybe, maybe not. Mm-hmm. Um. And then um, it was that and then also discovering that, okay, maybe I can do some experimentations here because it was a platform that didn't take itself too seriously. Mm. Um, so it was cheap to, 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 to experiment with. Uh, so for someone, I think at, at that point in time, when, when, if someone was asking me about um, wanting to get into the space, I always say, just, yeah, just try it on Tezos. If you understand Tezos, you will understand ETH um, because it's the same processes, right? Um, yeah, and then uh, I mean, in terms of collecting, uh, I mean, I'm a like I did a lot of flips in the start. What's a flip? Uh, uh, what's a flip? Uh, a flip <laughs> is buying something low and selling something high. Okay, this is like a. It's like people do that for stocks as well, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so going from having no knowledge in <laughs> day trading JPEG. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So which is why which is why I meant like I mentioned just now. It's like. There's so many different aspects to the space. When people talk about NFTs, people 
um, there, there's a misconception for popular media to think about NFTs as collectibles. Mm. And collectibles are like Flipping, PFPs, yeah. um, yeah. body apes, yeah. uh, you know, um, clone X and things like that. But it's not that. There's a, there's a whole ecosystem of one-of-one -one artworks and artists uh, sort of creating work in the space that use and leverage NFTs. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so I collect one of one occasionally if my flips make sense <laughs> sense uh, meaning money la. <laughs> yeah and and then uh and i started out with a, i guess to some extent a, a really low capital so yep. I'm, I'm just playing in that House space money. yeah yeah uh, playing in that space now at night uh like i have a proper job so that you know i can do that so you can find your habits so. <laughs> uh, no, and i've never fund his investment <laughs> no 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 I, I have not put any actual money uh since may of last year so everything has has been house Congrats. To, to, to this point. Um, and and you know, every now and then uh, if I need to if I look at something and I, I, I like it, um I find a way to to liquidate what I have yep. and 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 support someone or support something, I guess. But your your what attracts you as a consumer, does it dif differ from what attracts you as a creator? Oh, I think it's like two different me's. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> okay. I, uh, Okay, in terms of one of ones, yeah, I, I buy what I like. Sure. Uh, I think that's 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 the most straightforward uh answer, right? Yeah. Um and I don't have a lot. I think I can count on my hands how many I have. Okay. Um uh, but yeah, it's it's really just that instant connection, um and knowing who the artist is uh beforehand actually. It's like, oh I've actually followed this person. Like uh, for example, I I I bought I I Bing Chess first mm. uh NFT on foundation, and I'm like that is an image that resonated with me because of the the photographer. Because of the photographer, yeah, I've 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 seen his work before in in physical exhibitions and, um, and then seeing he, that he 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 put uh, an image or he minted an image that, uh, really resonated with me and I'm like, oh well, well I like, I can I afford this? Okay, you know, <laughs> and, and yep. then I got it. Yep. Uh, and then uh, recently, uh, um, there was this um illustrator that. Uh, on Procreate that I follow, his name is Kunchevsky, I think. Okay. Um, and I've 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 seen his tutorials uh for Procreate, uh, although I don't do very much drawing at, at the moment. Uh, but like I know him from way back. Yep. And then he uploaded his first NFT as well. I'm like, oh wow, okay. Like, can I afford it? Yep. Uh, and then um um I'm got it that way as well. So, yeah, it really is just it's 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 just that. Um, and then the other stuff that is collectibles, I there there is an investment mindset to that mm. that side of things. If it goes to zero, I'm fine. Like okay, it's 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 so okay. That, that that is how you sleep at night. Yeah, it's it's completely okay. okay. I, I I don't look at the prices like much. 24. <laughs> yeah, I don't look at the prices much. Yeah. Um. Uh. Some of them have become my digital identities as well. So there's there's this kind of emotional attachment. Mm. Um. There's there's one on my phone that you know like it's, it sort of feels like me and I I sort of identify with it. So. Uh yeah, like it's 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 a variety of things. It's looking at art in in as an, an identity. It's looking at art as something that I resonate with. It's mm. looking at, um, uh, yeah, it's looking at the space as oh, oh, what else can I play? What else can I do with it? So I don't I don't see it as much as an investment as play actually for myself. Yeah, but this idea of I think digital images as an investment seems kind of new. Because when, when people think of investment traditionally, it's more like stocks, bonds, uh, ETFs, all that stuff. But having, let's say, an NFT, which uh, is represented by this JPEG uh, as an investment, is kind of like a new concept, isn't it? Um, not exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if we're talking about prints and photography and like illustration, um, people have sold like um, properly printed illustrations and, and gone for thousands of dollars mm -hmm. and you know, did proper exhibitions. I mean, Joanne. Uh, yep. So, uh, I, 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 I think that, um, that that crossover is is the same. Um, it really is just a, a digital way to to do that kind of sale now. Um, yeah, I don't and and people buy what, oh, I I would think that people buy what they like. Um, you would buy a painting if you want. I don't know if you want to invest. I guess I don't know. Uh, you want depends to buy a, on the painting. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Or it yeah. depends on the painter, right? Yeah. Um. Uh. Or 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 depends on if you are um uh, building a collection around a specific artist, maybe. 
you know so it's 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 i don't know it's a little bit different but at the same time it's also the same um some people it's 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 the intention of the collector i guess at the end of the day um are they seeing it as uh, an investment or are they just do they just like it um do they just want to to see it yeah yeah I want to end off the podcast with two more questions. Um, what currently excites you about the space? Because I've 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 heard stories about how the space moves really fast, and they have an ADHD brain about the things, and they're constantly talking about it. And one thing could be very popular this month, but within two weeks, something new comes up. So, what is currently exciting you both about the space? Uh, I think I will start. Um, play to earn. What is that? Play to earn is basically monetizing objects uh, for games. Okay. So um, I'm, uh, I'm I'm not sure if you know uh, XE Infinity. That's the biggest sort of play-to-earn game at the moment. Mm. Um, uh, but it basically, uh, I mean, long story short, it's it's uh, a turn-based game. Um, you can breed um, these very cute axolotls. Um, the um, breeding will give you like new f- um, 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 statistics mm. uh, and then you can get rares or, or things like that um, but you need a specific kind of uh, currency to, 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 to initiate that breeding yep. you know or things like that so there's there's quite a lot of mechanics that go into it but it's all sort of in some ways monetized mm. um, there's some kind of financial instrument behind the game um, the axolotls you own um, can be sold for actual money mm. uh, when, when I say actual money I mean cryptocurrency and then converting that cryptocurrency out so play to earn is very I think a very interesting concept uh, and it's not uh, I would like to see where the space goes I'm not mm. sure it's the right way to monetize games yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure it's the right way to to to, to have games um, monetized in this way mm. because there, there hasn't been a, a, a game that really f- um, sort of nailed down the economics of it. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, like I'm curious to see that, and as as well as uh, uh, looking at um, NFT technology as 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 uh, by itself. So that's mm. uh, what can we do with NFTs? Looking at um, uh, JPEGs, static images. Can we think about um, NFTs? in um, changing circumstances? Can we incorporate data sets from the external world into NFTs? Uh, you know, because they're all digital assets at yep. the end of the day. Um, so that's that's kind of the project that uh, me and Jake uh, are doing for BIOS. Like It's a plant that mm. grows on the blockchain uh, and it grows every single day. You see your plant um, and you can interact with it. You can sort of zoom in, rotate, uh, take a picture. Um, and it becomes an actual object like it becomes an actual digital object it's yep. no, no longer an image of a plant it's yep. it, it is a plant yep yeah so i think that's that's sort of where i'm excited to that, that the space can head into um changing and shifting metaverse experiences does the digital plant die as quickly as a normal one i uh, know it's it's immortal <laughs> that, that, <laughs> as, that, that it's immortal good. as as long as the network exists <laughs> <laughs> it's, and, and it's interesting you you mentioned about uh gaming and I think playing to earn because I think the last big push or the last controversial thing about games and I think monetizing it is loot boxes. I think that generated so much controversy because if you have to think back in the days of let's say CD-ROMs, like I remember Warcraft, Diablo, you just get, you you buy the game and you you kind of own it in a sense. And yes. that's, it's a full package. But right now, I mean, in, in recent years, there's a lot of like downloadable content and they, they might even ship it, ship, ship the game to you unfinished and then they will patch it in later and then you have loot boxes, they, they paywall it. So even the idea for, for monetization is met with quite a lot of resistance. I think especially loot boxes because it, it's kind of seen as gambling is, and to, 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 to get certain skins, even though they, they might say that the skin has, has no uh, game in-game benefits. But I think it's it's the idea of wanting to look good digitally. And I think... Yeah, wanting it, to own something that, yeah. and, and, and flex. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So like... Yeah, you, if if you're, I guess, uh, an economist needs to sort of like join a, a game company and and sort of figure out that that um that whole structure. Mm. It's it's not easy. It's like how do you be profitable at the same time feed the people that are working on the game with you, and at the same time allow the players that you're 
um, playing the game to to have some kind of ownership yep. to the items that yep. that sort of exist in it. Yep. How do you balance all that? <laughs> I feel like over the past fifteen years with Facebook and social media, I mean games like Farmville, they are monetizing your attention and your time. And we've gone through so many things in this short period of time that we're kind of like, I don't know, a little bit numb to it. It's like yeah. something new will come out and we'll be like super cynical about it. And we have to have it prove to us, okay, this is finally worth our time because the speed at which technology moves is quite fast. Yeah, yeah. because Farmville, it's, it's, it rakes in a lot of money, but it, it kind of tricks and it monetizes your attention. You have to log in, you have to do certain things, you have to do certain tasks, you get certain... Uh, certain in-game, I guess, currency that you can use that currency to do something else. Yeah, but these are all like, yeah, attention. <laughs> yeah, and, and game development takes time. Exactly. <laughs> it, it took eight years for CD Projekt Red to, 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 to from conceptualization to actually launching a game which was buggy as at hell, as hell. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and you're telling people, oh, I'm going to build a game in one year mm. and make it play to it. And so what kind of game can come out of that kind of year? Um, Probably it, a kit bash of other games. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Maybe yeah. retro gaming, yep. you know, like a, a shooter or something like that. But, oh, but did you hear of the, sorry, this is a big segue, but like, <laughs> have you heard of the Unreal, uh, did you hear the Unreal? Um, uh, Engine 5? Uh, Engine 5. I've seen trailers for that. I've seen the demos for it. And yeah. I think it is quite interesting. And yeah. I think they released like the like they released Unreal Engine Five with the Matrix uh trailer and with the meta humans like they can generate like humans. Yeah. I think that is uh would be a big next step. And, and Unreal Engine Five is free. Yep. And um apparently they are dropping a template for a first person shooter as well. Interesting. So basically, you and me, we can just create something and we can create a first person shooter I like your optimism I, mean, <laughs> I really do I mean, that's crazy that's yeah. that's so uh, and it's free and it's like I'm, I'm just completely blown like that if 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 where if this is what we're going towards I'm happy like yeah. it's equitable people yeah. can get into it um, quickly you can you can now 3D model on Unreal Engine 5 so yeah b- because I, I, I think I was watching a YouTube video about it about metahumans like the that, that creation engine I think rigging and even coming up with facial expressions or realistic models like that is really difficult. And the fact that they are just putting it out there for, for people to play around with, I think it just elevates the 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 artistic ideals of what someone might want to create. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and you get, uh, I think further down the line, more and more realistic um, digital art, mm. which also then feedbacks to what the NFT space is doing. So I think I think it's all good uh, as long as we're sort of heading in this direction where, where Access to 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 software, access to, um, uh, access to to opportunities is is available. I think I think we're good. I, I'm optimistic. <laughs> I think what what is one of the more interesting uh observations in in recent years because I we I come from more of a two D illustration background, and I think there's more of an integration, especially to these days with two D and animation and animation even three D, and I think there's no uh no surprises because I think Blender became really, really popular and it's free, free to use, free for students to just download and play around with. Yeah, because I come from a time when I think if it's 2D, it's the 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 means at which you can showcase this 2D illustration is quite limited, either like a gig poster or like a key visual, it's all static, but within the past decade, it's like somewhere along the lines, oh, uh, it's it's a lot easier to to animate the, 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 the 2D illustration and right now it's like integration with uh, 3D it's like three dimensional, so yeah, I think I think technology such as that would kind of just keep boosting the 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 the, the creative imagination, really. Yeah. So Clara, what excites you about the space? <laughs> Unreal Engine. F- no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, get on. <laughs> um, what excites me about the space? I guess from like a more micro, maybe like personal. Angle. I'm excited to see how um, the artists in NFT Asia or like the artists around me can continue to grow in the space. Like, mm-hmm. I think Ernest can relate to this as well. Like, in the past year alone, our personal careers have, for me at least, like changed. Like, opportunities have become accessible, you know. Um, things that I may not have been considered for before I am now, Mm. or um, there are just a lot of new kind of um, 
possibilities because there is growing interest in this space. There is growing interest in how this technology will unfold. And even though we've only been in here for like and and deeply in here for maybe a little more than a year, Mm. we're somehow currently seen as like, oh, they've been around for a longer time. (laughs) Um, And that has also like for artists as well, you see that, you know, not only do they have this like new channel, an additional platform, but also people are now um, increasingly looking to work with artists um, mm. that are fluent kind of in this space yep. or to partner and collaborate with artists um, to push out new things. So I'm quite interested to see how these things will play out because they're fairly new. Um, and I wonder if they could also push forward, say, more and more cross industry kind of collaborations, um, more um, interest coming out from outside of like the art world yeah. um, to be looking at artists to try and understand what artists are doing to try and understand how art works, our practices can be integrated into our lives in general. Mm. Um, I think that would be a kind of broad change um, or broad opening for like the art industry and adjacent or further away industries that i'm curious about um i was so interested to see how collectives like ours will scale or will um counter like increasing pressures to monetize Mm. or to you know turn into a DAO, like a decentralized autonomous organization (laughs) all the time um very curious to see what exhibitions will continue to look like for especially for like exhibitions that focus on nft art we saw a lot of them last year that were really just like screens on a wall um what will you know developing technology um, more and more immersive kind of ways of viewing digital art um, mean for people encountering artworks um, minted on the blockchain um, to look like so yeah i guess all of these things um i'm pretty excited about just curious to see what this unfolding can really mean for the arts yeah i think my last question for y'all is so the idea of community is often tied to uh, the idea of NFTs as well. It's like NFT community. Uh, what is this community talking about? So I'm curious to know, what does the word community mean to each of you? And why is uh, this definition, why is the word community important? Hmm. I think it's... Uh, hmm, maybe... maybe an, uh, 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 how would I put it? Hmm. Maybe it's easier to tell a story. Of course, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's 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 Clara reaching out and saying, "Hey, um, you do NFTs, uh, and then um, you know, like, tell me about it." And then, "Hey, um, do you want to start a Discord? Hey, do you want to be a mod?" And then, "Oh, now we're a community." <laughs> <laughs> this is like a meme, and then like, it's like the the, the brains. <laughs> so I, I I don't know. I mean, like it's it's. We we I, I don't know it's not so structured in that way it's it's really how it happened and how um these different communities formed in some way were quite organic um although the I guess the intentions or the the goals and the objectives have changed over time um but like for example a ten k profile picture collection is building an identity yep like it's it's us saying hey we're part of this group yep. um and it's as simple as that everyone connecting to uh, uh an illustration um oh that is me but as an ape yep. that is me as a cat yep um and yeah and and you know like uh if you find uh i guess your tribe or your um uh, people that sort of think like you a little bit or are willing to experiment um, you, you you sort of can find pockets of communities where you sort of feel that you belong. Mm. So I think that's what NFT Asia is for me. Um, like it was a place to go to to talk to people that um I I sort of have a connection with to some extent, um, and you know learn from each other. Mm. Um, and I think I learned a lot just talking to people on the Discord. Yeah. Uh, and we we never actually really met until like six months after the Discord started. Okay. So it was it was it was really just an online chat room. Yeah. In, in some ways. Yeah. Um, and you just 
yeah, you find small pockets of space where you can sort of feel like you belong. That's cool. Clara? Community is a big word. <laughs> <laughs> so how, if, if, if it is a big one, yeah. how, how would you define it then? Well, I mean, like fundamentally, we're still social and relational animals. And I think we're always looking for those kind of connections and relationships, right? For me, when we first started, it was really because... Um, I just wanted to meet other people in the space. Like mm. it was coming from, I just want to get to know the people. I want to learn alongside people. I don't want to go through it alone because it feels so overwhelming and I don't really know what I'm doing. And I want it to, you know, grow alongside people who might know things I don't and yeah. that I could share back things I do, vice versa. Um, and I think, yeah, like Ernest said, over time, we felt that that was what kept the community together. We're not really offering any financial opportunities, you know? So people stay engaged in the Discord because either they're interested in the content that we're kind of putting out, the events we're hosting, or because they just enjoy chatting to the friends that they've met there. Mm -hmm. They enjoy the connections that they've built, that they fostered because of the starting point. And they can take those connections and run with it and it can grow into a, you know, so many different things. But it was really a meeting place to start with. Um, and I think in a place that is so focused on like, you know, your individual journey, mm. your your financial decisions, it's all about like sovereignty, financial yep. freedom, yep. being thankless, you know, all, <laughs> all of those things, Keywords, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, there are like that blockchain and like crypto communities are about. Um, it, I think there there is like, say a need or a strong want, even prior to NFTs, like in crypto communities, um, to be connected to other people, mm. either to learn from each other, you know, to share information or to share connections that you're kind of in this journey together. And I think in this one year alone, what we've seen as well is that so much is happening all the time that when you have other people to talk to, other people who are sharing info with you and you back, um, you can talk about things together. You just, it feels a lot more manageable, at least for me personally. So I feel like I am very committed or I'm very happy to always be like thinking about NFT Asia, thinking about what we can do for it because I care about the people in it. Um, and I care about, you know, their journey. I care about what they can get out of it. Mm -hmm. I care about their growth and my relationship with them and so on. So I guess that for me is like what community is. It's, it's a group of people who are brought together because they have the same interest in like NFTs and art and learning about the space in general. And they want to share resources. They want to share, uh, connections, yep. build relationships together, friendships, so on, and then support each other in their journey. Um, and, you know, obviously like our mission is to uplift Asian artists in the space. So everyone in the community, regardless of like where you're from, where you're based, we don't really, we don't look into All that. Skill or level even. Yeah, we yeah. don't, we don't care. You know, as long as you agree with this mission, then you're a part of the community and we're very happy to have you. Um, yeah. It's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> I can cut that part out. I can send to you all to, to, to <laughs> put it somewhere. Yeah. Meet on the blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> Music. <and empty. laughs> Before we end, is there anything else you guys would like to talk about? Astrology. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I think thank you for having us here. I think it was fun. Thank <laughs> you for, for taking time out of your schedule. <laughs> and I just want to <laughs> Where? And, and she wants to talk about astrology. No, so we can dedicate just... 10 minutes to that. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? No, no, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Where can people find you guys? What platforms are you guys most active on? Please, share. Um, so as uh, myself, I'm uh, like, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Ernest Wu underscore uh and then um you can find my company serial communication on uh serial.sg you can also find some of it unsure uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, to to look at it so yeah um, I'm, I'm, you can also find uh should i talk about nft asia yeah. you can find nft asia on discord and twitter uh we are nft asia official on twitter and you can find me on Instagram at Clara Likes Art. 
<laughs> and I work at Appetite, which is on 72A on Moy Street. <laughs> In case Google doesn't help you. Um, For Discord, know. sorry, um, the invite, because you need an invite um, to get it. Is it on the Twitter or is it? Yeah, it's on our Twitter. Yeah, if you just go on to it, it's right there in the bio. It's mm-hmm. really just discord.gg or something and then backslash NFT Asia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, thank you both for your time. Thank you for the conversation. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode and feel inspired. If you enjoyed what you heard thus far, do give us a follow on Instagram. And don't forget to share and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next episode.